Howdy, Buffalo Bart here, and welcome. All right, so just going to be working on Stream Party, my project. So as you guys join in, chime in, say hello, ask questions, whatever. I am trying something that I haven't done before and not having much success, but eh, whatever. That's how you learn, right? So, just testing out um, one thing really quickly. So, and yes, there are female characters now. I have actually spent a few minutes of working on the um, the main menu and character creation. So, with the Sinti, they don't have the, the regular Sky Sphere, and I may actually change that so that it's actually more usable. Um, so, really fast day-night cycle, uh, just to get it rolling. And what I'm doing is trying to set it up to where, when it becomes nighttime, then I want the street lights to come on. Very small, subtle thing, but it's one thing that I want. I want those to work. It's one of those things that um, just comes to mind that is a nice little touch of having a day-night cycle to begin with. Another thing also, the clouds um, will probably end up making the clouds go away at nighttime as well. I don't know. So, for some reason, the Polygon Town map had two main light sources, and after deleting one of them and editing the other one so that um, does you know cycle so let's actually find the sun here so you can see the sun is actually moving I'll change the angle I don't know if I like that it's going off at that angle there but whatever so for the current speed this is just gonna be um, testing it out here we'll run a delay this is not how I want it to work, and I'll kind of show how I want it to work here in a few minutes. Um, just run 10 seconds. Wait, um, this is just whatever. And I'll, I actually want to get this as an, an actual event to turn the lights on, turn the lights off. And all I'm doing is setting visibility. This part right here will actually go away. But I want to verify that I can actually see the light. I see the light. Visibility is true and false. Point light. Big attenuation radius. And I don't know if it's actually going to be visible because I have it stuck right there. see the light. Why don't I see the light? Point light is not visible and then when you run custom event of lights on it sets visibility to true. Um, Just a regular point light. How 
if it's even oh because of that, yes. I know. If you guys come up with an, a, a nice way of... Okay, I want to see the freaking light. Why in the hell... Oh, because there is no player start in the default map. Why don't I see the light? You know what? Let's just do this and get rid of you and you. I just want the light to be on. Point light. Let's make it red. Normally you see it there. Okay, well, I see it now. So, let's uncheck visible. And then... I may come back to this, I don't know. It just was a thought that came to mind here. So, four seconds. Set visibility to true. And then four seconds later, turn it off. So it should not be visible now. It's not very bright. And then now it's on. And now it's off. So we know it works. to give it a name and it's off by default so come in here get this set visibility and set it to true here and leave it to false there Damn my OCDs. Alright, so that's going to be fine. In fact, actually, let's go back in here and change the intensity to 10,000. So I want it bright, bright. Attenuation radius is fine. But what I'm wanting to do is go off of the level blueprint. So what we've done here is just for shits and grins. We grabbed from the delta seconds and multiplied that by 10 on the float. Um, get a reference to our light source. If you don't know how to do that, find your God, God Almighty, light source. And then once you select it there, right click and you can create a reference to light source directly into your blueprint. So, okay, we got a light source. I want to add actor local rotation and I'm going to break that and make rotator and then combine those together. I want to, what I'm trying to do is get actor rotation, this rotation here, um, which is just the, the pitch. And I want to turn lights on and off. Um, now I can leave that connected. 
try breaking this and broke rotate break rotator. Equal it is not a vector. And it is a float. Let's try it at ninety. So what I'm trying to do is trying to, because uh, I'm using a large map here, um, once I'm, I've got the sun rotating, which it's doing its thing, I then want to get the actual rotation and find the, the pitch where, you know, the elevation is in the sky. So whenever it's actually at 90 or negative 90 or whatever it may be, um, I need to actually find that part. And then... If it is at that, then I want to turn the lights on. When it's not, I want to turn it off. And doing it this way, I'm only going to see a blink. So I should probably put a delay in because it's going to be on off. And let's actually break the fault. So we only turn it on. That way it doesn't automatically turn itself right back off again. We just want it to come on. Once I've got it to where it can come on, I can set it up to where it'll go off. So we do not see the light. And it never came on. It cycled the nighttime, but we have no light. negative 90 um, like I said if you guys got any better ideas just chime right in and say hey why don't you try this sounds going we have no light see that the light is off by default or not visible by default and turning it on sets the visibility to true and that's all we need to do and if we look at the actual light itself and make it visible it's not showing in here and it used to do that um let's create a little something here a second test light so that whenever I'm in here we've got this one that will work off of the thing let's actually put it right where we can see it over the the white lighting in fact even more so let's put it right in the intersection or cross section right there of the sidewalk so we know that it's there. And I'm going to run a branch. We're going to ask, is it on? And then turn it on or turn it off. manually so if we take this and now um, our details panel we have on and off so control C and control V so I can put another one in here and I'm going to tell this one to be on so we can see we have a red glow there so we'll know if this one comes on it'll show up right here And I don't see anything. I 
All right, well, I'll just have to revisit this. That's just going to take way too much time. Um, let's actually go back to the main menu and show what I've done so far. So, main menu map. Come in here to play. And let's see. Let's actually do it in a new window. I will have to fix that. Um, because we're seeing doubles here. Alright, so, got our character, should only need a player start, and let's put a player start in at 0, zero. and there we go. So we see our character, a little bit of lighting to it, um, go to setup character, we have male or female, there'll be more options but if we choose male go into single player we have the male character and there was much rejoicing so you go on duty and off duty if you're on duty you can teleport to the jail you can have a seat now the key to actually teleport back and forth I did set up another variable on there so that you can't teleport while you're actually sitting down um, so go over here if you're not on duty you can't go to the jail I may or may not keep that but sit down what happens if I go on duty nothing we just change mesh I can't teleport because I'm sitting down but as soon as I stand up I can teleport all right so we are the male character and that's good the setting seems to be working a lot better. There's still some issues. Um, I haven't added the rotating light in here yet. I'm still using the other version of this map as a, uh, a, a test bed before committing it to the actual map, with the actual temporary map. Um, bathroom. You can now sit on the commode. That present was already there, by the way. I didn't leave that. Um, same thing with the upstairs toilet. I know it's very, very inconsequential. But you can sit on the commodes. And we'll be adding the, the sit spot to more locations. So that um, if you come in here, two people can sit on that. Uh, I might move this chair a little bit and let you sit down there. Uh, maybe put a computer or laptop there on that desk. Uh, little things like that of improving this map, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time improving this map whenever I'm actually going to be setting up an, another map. Um, phone. I'm going to be changing, adding some more options in. Um, I'm going to add in, I think the best way to do it is to create a texting system so that um, basically, like, whenever you go to your character, you can change your dance and, and crap like that. But, um, and if you've got a mask, you can put it on or off. But also, I need to make another fix to the home screen, but we'll get to that later. But add in a chat feature, and you press a button, and you'll get an actual chat window with a global chat system. Still no money in incorporated in the game yet, and no settings changed. Um, but let's go back to the main menu and so if we change our character what I want to do is set it up to where when you first load the game the very first time and let's actually close it back um, the first time you load in this is your character and yeah and you're not gonna get steam functionality while in this mode but the very first time you load the game the setup character options menu will be up by default and then once you have created a save game, you know, or created your character, let's say, okay, I want to be a female character, um, this actually will automatically commit that to the save game. Whenever I hit female character, it saves it to the save game, not just changing the character here. And then whenever I go and actually play, it remembers that, okay, now it loads the save game in, and I'm a female character. I go on duty, I'm actually a female character on duty. 
so that works. And now when you're playing it in two player, let's go and temp down here. Run two and new pi. And of course I've got one off the other monitor. So you're testing like this, both characters or all your characters that are running this way are going to be operating off the same save game, so you can't have them separately. Um, so if I try to go on duty with the client, nothing, hit G, I can see that, hey, I'm just a normal player. And if the server does it, let's actually, for you guys to see, I'm not going to get crazy with changing everything around here, size-wise. But if the host does it, it's G, server admin, you know, or it's just saying that, hey, I'm the admin. So you do your your class check, uh, just a normal player. If I hit my phone, this does not work. But if you're the admin, you can see I am admin, bring up my phone. I can actually bring up a specific menu just for admins. And then we'll turn this phone off. And still got to change this feature around a little bit. Um, so that player was tagged. Let's turn that feature off. So now this player has been tagged. And when they hit G, they are now a moderator. And they can go on duty. And you can see that since they are a female character, they get the female police officer uniform. Since I'm a female character as well, I get the female FBI character since I am the actual host or admin. So I can teleport, go into the jail, have a seat, and I can teleport. She's over chilling. I can actually go over here. Um, one of the only things I want to do is go ahead and start setting up the um, the send player to jail. It's not going to be as simple of you know as just okay go to jail. Um, and it broke. I don't know why the hell this shit does that. Why the hell would it break occasionally? There's no reason for it to break. Everything else is you know bulletproof. It works great. But for some reason, every so often, and it doesn't matter if you're a host or a client, it just breaks. So I'll go back off duty. You see, I cannot teleport because I'm sitting down. Stand up, and now I can teleport. Go off duty. I, I, I don't have a damn clue. And. I, I'm not going to worry with it right now. It is so low on the food chain of issues that I just don't care. Everything else is working fine, but for just some reason, doesn't matter if it's this version or what. See, it works just perfectly fine. And I can stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down a hundred times, and it'll work perfectly. And then just every so often, it'll just say, you know what, screw you, I'm not going to work. So... I will be adding that sit spot to all the park benches that are here. It's not on this one. Um, but, like, if you go over here to the house, go to the pool, there are some chairs in the back that are usable. See, it broke that time. Why the hell would it break? There's nothing in, in the the sit-down blueprints and all that stuff that will cause that. Everything is set up correctly. There's just no no reason for it other than I'm religion for. Now, this pool is a little bit too shallow to swim, which kind of sucks. But I am working on the new map here and there. And, yeah, total work in progress. Nothing here other than, like, the background mountains and the little city ring. No real illumination. Nothing. I mean, nothing's here yet. Um, this house over here, you can't go in the house, but 
the backyard is a swimming pool. And yeah, I only put the gate on one side. But I changed the dimensions of the pool. It's still not deep enough. But what I'm going to do is, since right here, I've, you know, I've changed the, um, the way you get in and out. It, it works. But I need to make the pool deeper so that when you actually get into the pool, you can actually go into the swimming animations. Uh, that's going to have to be done a little bit at a, at a time. Figure out how to make it not look dorky whenever you rescale the depth. The stairs look huge. I didn't make the mesh. I'm just trying to make do. Um, but I wanted the uh, the pool to be usable. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of the city here or the town. Uh, I'm trying a few different things to minimize the amount of actors. Because if you, like this right here, this is a instead of a bunch of squares to fill that zone, it's one. And I've just scaled it up. See, it's 12x on the scale. Sidewalk, unfortunately, you have to do this way or the mesh just doesn't look right. The road you can kind of get away with as well. Um, so you see all these road pieces here. If I were to grab all these, I can actually reduce the number of how many actors. If I can get rid of more actors, the more you can get rid of, the better. So if I get rid of those, it leaves it open. But if I scale it, let's actually move you. I deleted the wrong ones, but whatever. Get it in the correct location and then scale it. And normally I don't like scaling things, but some of these parts will actually scale, some won't. So you're going to be 10 by 2. And that just reduced a buttload of friggin' actors on this map. But look what it did to the street. It does look kind of dorky. But that's okay. Same now here you're gonna have these two can be reduced to one and here you can reduce to either eight can be reduced to one and then you have one on either side. So let's actually do that. And we'll make this too wide. Actually, no, that's wrong dimension. And I went the wrong direction, so let's try negative two. Nah, let's just do two, and we'll just move it. Anytime you can reduce the number of actors in, in your map, the, the better. I mean, really and truly. And I'm going to see once I rescale this one. Two. Nope. Maybe one and two. Because these materials do not scale correctly, that's why it stretches them. Uh, a couple of the Cinti packs, the material scale, so you can get away with this a lot easier. But that's already reduced quite a few number of actors. So I could do the same thing all over here and spend time doing actor reduction. Delete you and scale you. And that's going to be 
10 by 2. So you can see that that's a great way of reducing the number of actors. Um, Cindy assets, for the most part, are pretty good about um, not being totally chunky. But whenever you have like the uh, the apocalypse pack, uh, God, um, one of the first things I had to do was go in and fix collision issues and yeah. So just that quick, we deleted uh, a lot more actors. Not not gonna sit here and make you guys watch all this. But you think, um, I'll do one more. One. So that's 20 actors that are being reduced down to one actor. So each of these street sections, I can reduce the number of actors in my map. by at least 19 per and let's go back to 10 on snapping with the um, the sun issue if you guys have any ideas on how I can do that let me know because that's going to bug me until I figure it out. And yeah, it doesn't take much to, to bug me. But I really, really want to get that figured out. So that whenever the sun is down and essentially. Or that way? No. Two and four. I want to be able to turn street lights on at nighttime and turn them off during the daytime. Do that way. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm not going to sit here and keep doing that. I'm just going to do this. And, yeah, even though we still have 1,500 actors, um, I'm not going to do a lighting build right now. Thank God that would take a while, even with this little bit this year. Um, but we will make sure we save. And, like I said, with the, um, the day-night cycle... Reflection captures need to be rebuilt. So yeah, at, when the sun goes down, I got the sun going really, really quickly just so I can get an idea of how to, to trigger. See, that light is on permanently, but there's another one that's right here that I want it to actually work only when it's nighttime. No, we're not going to look up Grandma's dress. So, you see our sun? It's all on us. This is a test version of the other map. So, or the original version of the map, that I should say. So we want it to when now, it's nighttime. I want this street light or all the street lights to be on, and as soon as the sun starts coming up, night like now the light should go off. And I don't want to run a freaking delay or anything like that. I want to come up with an actual trigger to know whenever the sun is at a certain level. And light source is right here. And if I have to, I'll actually go back to another regular map and a regular skylight so that, uh, yeah. You know you want to see up Grandma's dress. I'm not going to do it. What's that, man? Um, 
let's check our rotation here at zero, zero, and zero. And I'm just going to put those zero, zero. So with the rotations pretty much set at that, we hit play now. Damn. This is why I'm screwing around on another map instead of the, the primary. And now it's daytime. Sun's going directly overhead. Wait, that light came on. Um... Alright, this light is always on, but watch right here at this intersection. Okay, um, there, it just came on. Let's, um, look at the blueprint, and let's put it back at 90. And oh, come on, and let's get rid of the other one. So this one we're not worried about. This one right here, this light should come on when the sun is at 90 degrees. There it is, it just popped up. So it started at nighttime light came on um, so now let's actually go back to our skylight or our light source and do a rotation want to change the yaw to 90 Do we want to do the yaw or pitch or roll or what value do we want to do here? Because if we look at the sun, it's actually going directly overhead and is your light going to come on? There, it's on and it can come on when I wanted it to, but it's a start. We want our light source. Is it negative 90? Um, So is that going to work a little darker overall? Um, where the hell is the sun? Hmm. Alright, so that's going in the absolute wrong direction there. Um, light source, let's change that back to zero and if you look at it I just this, like I said, it's going to bug me until I get this correct so it's night time now I want it back daytime alright, the light just came on Let 
Let's just look at how the lighting is. You're going to have to do an actual lighting rebuild. So let's look at plugging, instead of plugging that back in, let's actually add another version of this. So yes, that's going to turn it on, and now we need a location to turn it off. So let's do an equal equal float and plug that in here just for now it's just going to be 90 and negative 90 if it's true then we do that we turn the lights off I will try to reset it back to where it's daytime, but I want to see lights going on and off. Lights on. Now I want to see it go off. Still see the red glow on the fence there, and it just went off. It's daytime. I think I'll adjust the sun position a little bit. And it's nighttime, but the lights haven't come on yet. There it's on. We want them to come on a little sooner. So instead of at 90, it's like 60. Oh, take forever. Take forever, please. All right. So unfortunately, not much I can do here. And one thing I don't like, look at the sun on her ass. Don't be looking at her ass, but looking at the sun, the, the light is stupid. I am not a lighting expert. So as it's getting dark, starting to get dark, and I want the lights to come on now. Huh. No light. It's day again. All right, you guys are gonna help me out with this. Um, come up with a better way of doing this. If I was using a regular sky sphere, you can actually bring the stars out and then hide the stars. But since we're using a Cinti method of doing things, it's just totally not working. Um, but if I put it back at 90, it seemed like it was working. It starts at nighttime, and I don't want it to start at nighttime. All right, so lights on, wax on, wax off, right? Lights off. Timing is way off. There, there's got to be another way of doing this got to be a better way of doing this but will it come back on again there we go lights back on so the whole purpose of this like I said was to um, set up the street lights I want the street lights to work no I don't want them to be red but it was a lot more visible go back to five Get it just right. And yes, I will change the colors and actually create a different light in, in, instead. 
Yeah, the rotation of the um, the skylight is what's actually setting up the, the day of the night cycle. And it's using the, the delta time. I mean, I could use real time. Um, I could use probably uptime. I just don't want to run a delay timer. Um, I could do a force day night, you know. It is not visible there. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I could do that. I could just do it. That would probably be easier. So I could just visibly see a number and know, hey, it's at this rotation. But I want to get the, the the lighting a little bit better so I can control the rotation a little bit easier. All I did was I moved the freaking light. Why is it no longer working? Maybe it's the type of light. Um, yeah, see, it's on now. See, technically speaking, um, the skylight itself was just a test light. Um, and I used a point light. Let's actually change this over. We'll add in a um, spotlight. And what I'll do is use the spotlight instead of the other light. Check visible. <coughs> yeah, it, it didn't like being inside that mesh. And even when I tried to move it a little bit more, it was still in there. So, what I'll do is configure it to be for these big lights here for now. And then I'll actually come up with a different one for the other lights. Oh, it doesn't have to be perfect right now, but because this is not even the, the primary map. We want that light, you know, the, the main street lights to come on and the little small ones to come in. And all I want to do is just create one basic light blueprint and just shove it on every one of those street lights, whether it's this one or the other one. I may have to do two different types, one for each, but. still too high. Do test light, spotlight, jack that one up to 10,000. And let's just give it some other color just so it's visible. Um, you know what, screw it, we'll leave it white. Let's actually turn it on so we can take a look at it. Make sure that it is actually visible. And it's not.
It is. I can see it. But uh, I think it's better to have it um, a, an offset color, just weird, just so we can actually see what it, that it's out on and doing something. So you can see the red glow. It's on. I'm actually going to go ahead and just throw it close to the ground. Make sure you change the the cone. We want it harsh going down. But also, I just want to see the damn thing. All right. Uncheck visible, and let's see if that's going to do anything. Okay, lights on. And it's still on, it's just hard to see. And it's off. You know, in doing this, it's so much more difficult to try, oh, is that light on? Is that light off? Let's actually just throw something in here. A visible object. Um, add a component. Uh, a, I don't care. A cube. And we'll change it to... that and let's lower it down just a little bit so it's not actually in the light we want to see that there is a visible object there and then instead of trying to oh, gee is that light on or off and I'll just throw that in here and do the same thing so we'll turn off visibility by default So we actually have a cube. We have some physical object. Didn't really need to make it that small, but all right. So we can see it. Let's actually make it bigger. I, I don't know why I made it so freaking small. It's a test. It's not supposed to be a finished project. You know, that's why I'm here. Ask away. And... Where's my cube? <laughs> oh. I'm going to put it right back over here over the uh, sidewalk. Yeah, just, I should just ask away. All right, so we have a cube. And then get to a certain point, it'll turn off visibility. It'll still physically be there, but uh, it just won't be visible. So yeah, it, it went away. And then as the cycle continues, it should come back. There we go. So technically it's working. I uh, just got a lot of shit to dial in on it. Alright, so I'm going to get out of this map. Work on something else. So...
And if I don't want to be grandma anymore, I can then go back to main menu, play, mail, and it automatically saves. And then when I go into single player, I'm the male character now. Instead of running around as grandma, it could be grandpa. I don't like anything. I'm old and grumpy. You know that. <laughs> the one thing that I always say is make it different, make it fun. Because there's plenty of games out there where Rock'em Sock'em Robots, where you're just standing there face to face, you know, brawling or, you know, there's so many of the same cookie cutter games of all kind of different types. Make it interesting. Add something that you don't normally see. Um, I come up with, you know, whatever I'm, I meditate a couple times a day, just try to, to purge my brain because my brain will start going 100 miles an hour and nothing gets accomplished. Not like anything ever gets accomplished anyway, but as I'm sitting there trying to purge my brain, thoughts pop into my head of different things for gaming of how can I make it different in a good way, a funny way, things like that. And like one of the, um, the, the concepts, just as an idea of what I was thinking, for a game, and I'm not going to make the game. It's just that I'm I'm full of something. Usually it's shit, but um, I'm usually full of good ideas. I just never actually do them. Um, you imagine your main protagonist. I know it's not uh, exactly what you were talking about, but um, let's actually go back in here. And just because I'm a sadist, go back to Grandma. Single player. Just to be distracting. Um, yep. Grandma gonna twerk. <laughs> or we could just. Yeah, I gotta fix that too. Okay, it won't make you watch Grandma twerk. We'll watch the uh, female FBI chick uh, twerk. Okay, so imagine your main protagonist is a um, a guy. He could be a man or a woman, but you know, in this case, being a man. Um, shit happens, he's involved, you know, th there's a need. He has to go out and fight. He has to go out and kill bad guys or zombies or what have you. But he hates violence. Doesn't just hate it, but the sight of blood and gore makes him sick. I mean, sick to, to where he throws up. So you imagine your main protagonist, you're out there running around in the game and you're getting into combat and you you shoot somebody and you you pop their head off, or they blow their arm off, or you see blood or guts on the ground. Your character starts throwing up uncontrollably for you know a few seconds. Imagine that as your your stun effect. You're running through there, you're shooting, bang, 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 and uh, oh my god, it makes him sick, and he starts throwing up. And now, right in the middle of a firefight, people are still shooting at him, but he's behind a barricade throwing his his guts up, you know. Little dumb things like that, just to change it up. So now as you're running through, you're, you're getting all these multi-kills and blowing people up with grenades, and anytime it gets really gory or bloody, he just stops and throws up. You know, just dumb things like that that throw away from the, the norm. Yes, I know i got to fix the root of the, uh, the animations on these because they seem to be... Um, hovering above the ground, and when you stop doing it, you're back. So the, that's the root issue. So I'm going to go back to build map, and where's my animations? Dances. So yeah, did you, whatever you're... You look at your your thing, your, your concept, think of something totally different. I'm going to try this one. This is the, um, actually, no, let's actually use the f default, which was the stripper dance. 
Yeah, that's the default dance. So if you look at that one, he's hovering. His shoes are the bottom of his shoes are white. Um, sitting idle. Let's actually look at an idle. Third person idle. Um, it, it, um, I don't remember. I've had these for so long and converted them and converted them and converted them. So let's look and see where his feet are now and that idle. And you can see, boom, up. So if I grab the root and that. Unfortunately, there's no snapping on this. I don't know if I've gone too far or not far enough. Or So let's key and apply and save. All right, that's closer. Need to come down just a hair more. So key, apply, save, and then yeah. Feet are still off the ground a little bit, but that's that's good enough. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back through all of these. And just do that. Key, apply, save. Yeah, I think they were mixed by animations. But yeah, just concept wise, um, what era, you know, what um, is it modern? Is it low poly? Is it realistic? Is it, you know? I'll come back and readjust these as necessary. But a little bit better for keeping them on the ground. Shake it, Grandma. Um, For doing a lot of melee, uh, another thing that, um, in an example, playing Hitman and Hitman 2, um, and also go back to um, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, there's been so many versions of it, I, I can't keep up, but uh, I believe it was uh, GTA San Andreas, and one of the, the weapons you could find somewhere was a large purple double-headed dildo. And you could run around and, and beat people to death with that. Um, creative weapons. Uh, if you're doing a boxing game and you've got boxing gloves on, why not make the boxing gloves look like balloons or make them look like um, uh, watermelons or whatever? You know, if if you're just doing you know regular weapons, yeah, you got a baseball bat, pipes, and things like that, but why not have um, a pool noodle that does very little damage or um, a, a sock with a roll of quarters and so oh god throwback to a really old game one must die it was you know like street fighter and you know that kind of stuff or the whatever some of the other ones were. I, I never did play that type of game all that much, where you're basically running back and forth, left and right only. It's a side side to side game, and a fixed little arena, and you're doing um, combo attacks and jumps and and so forth. Um, and one must die. It was robot versus robot, and you could upgrade your robots to different robots and and that kind of stuff. 
um, and get different combo attacks and build up this and build up that. But it was another one that came to mind, but it was adding those fun things in uh, with your combo attacks. I mean, if you want to add a comedy aspect to it, then passing gas, farting on somebody would be a stun. Or um, if it's a female, have her, or a male, I'm not going to judge, you know, throw out a, um, a handful of glitter and, and blind somebody temporarily. Or um, throwing sand in somebody's eye, so, you know, that kind of effect. Um, you know, blowing black pepper, you know, like, whew, you know, blowing black pepper in somebody's eye, or um, adding comedy to a game makes it fun. Um, there's games like, uh, some of these newer ones that are absolutely just, I, I think they're stupid, but when you're playing them with other people, it tends to be a lot more fun. So, um, totally reliable delivery service. If you look at the game, it's absolutely horrible looking game. It's low poly, okay. Um, the controls are absolutely just terrible at best. The the way that you pick up the packages and drive and all the stuff that you do in there is absolutely ridiculously stupid. There was no way in hell I would ever release a game that the control aspects were that bad. But you combine that with another person playing at the same time, and it becomes fun. Human Fall Flat, another one just like that. Absolutely ridiculously stupid method of player control and everything else. Um ultimate chicken horrors. Uh, hell, all you gotta do is watch uh, Achievement Hunter and 80% and of the games that they play absolutely stupid. But because you're playing in a multiplayer, you're having fun together and the fun aspect, when you're laughing your ass off, you're not getting stuck into a game uh, you know, like I play World of Tanks for an hour this morning and it absolutely annoyed the living dog shit out of me. First off, the players are shit. It's a free-to-play game, and you get what you get. But, on top of that, it's 15 versus 15, and what it worked out is it's 15 individuals versus 15 individuals. There's no teamwork involved. Nobody thinks of, if I do this, is it going to be good or bad for the team effort? They don't think about team effort. They think about, uh, I want to steal this kill from this asshole over here so he doesn't get the points that I do. Um, they're not thinking about anybody else but themselves, and that's the way the world works. But um, forced cooperation is good in the game, but comedy wins over. Then you get these people that, are, oh, your your stats, you suck. You, you have bad stats. Um, and one of the things that bugs me about... Um, the world of um, whore ships and uh, world of stank and anything from whore gaming uh, their products there's um, a lot of people that play it so that there's a lot of stats you can look at and check another player's stats and so forth and people will judge somebody based on your win rate well and this is me standing on my soapbox here um, if you judge the win rate on a player's ability, let me give you an example. 15 versus 15. I went in, in and this has happened many, many times back when I was an active player and was still good at it. I, I could care less now, but um, I went into a battle and I made 11 kills. I killed 11 out of the 15 enemies but I couldn't kill all of them and I ended up dying and our team lost. I killed 11 out of 15. The other 14 people on my team couldn't manage to kill the other remaining um, four tanks. 
They couldn't get four kills between 14 players. I get 11 kills, but because I didn't kill all of them, I didn't kill one more. I got killed before the rest of them died and our team lost. But that goes on my record as a loss, even though I made 11 kills out of the 15 enemy players I killed 11 of them myself but it, it's still I lost that's a it loss it doesn't matter it goes on my permanent high school record saying oh you lost that battle I didn't win I lost so that goes against my win ratio even though I've killed 10 11 other players in battle if we didn't win then that's just a, per, a loss on my record so how does that affect my ability as a player whenever I either contributed nothing and we won, but that still goes on my win ratio as I win. But if I went in there and killed two-thirds of the enemy team and we still lost, that's still a loss. So how does your win ratio, oh, well, you've only got a 43% win ratio. Okay. What am I supposed to do? Make the other 14 people on my team play better? That shit doesn't happen like that. So I, I just don't get... And, and then other people that look at your stats, well, you've played 10,465 battles, and your win rate is this, and, you know, your hit ratio is that, and... Okay. Your point is? You want to talk about your, your hit ratio. If you are playing a tank destroyer, and you use World of Stank as a, an example for this. If you're using a tank destroyer, you're going to make aim shots that are going to hit your, your target and cause a shitload of damage. Your whole job is to sit somewhere and, and apply damage, you know? So therefore, you're going to be more apt to have a higher hit ratio if you're taking your time to aim at a target, you know, across the map. Whereas, if you're fighting in a light tank with a machine gun, basically, that's firing you know, full auto, you're going to miss more than you're going to hit. But that still goes against your hit ratio. So, yeah. People get too wrapped up over stats, so that's why I want to go ahead and make sure that anything that I'm doing, game-wise, does not involve stats. I, you know, like that. Okay, if you're playing in an arena, Team A has, you know, if you're trying to make it to 10 kills, yeah, those stats up there of, of what the score is. But individual stats, yeah, I'm not trying to go for the participation trophy thing here. Oh, well, you did a good job. You didn't win, but you did a good job. Here's your cookie. No, fuck that. You don't get no damn cookie. You lost. You want a cookie? Play better. <laughs> you know? But, you know... Back to the whole point of that was, instead of forcing your players to get uptight about stats and this and that and everything else, throw some comedy in, especially if it's going to be multiplayer. If it's not going to be multiplayer, eh, still throw some comedy in there, but be creative. I'll think of some other um, things for that style of game. You know, if you're talking about like uh, Mortal Kombat style game then I'll come up with some concept ideas for that, and I'll throw them on Discord. Um, just remind me. I'm old. I forget shit. Um, but yeah, with the day-night cycle thing, uh, what I was thinking about doing... Now, see, this is a regular um, UE4 Sky, so I can actually change the... Um, the sky sphere itself and have it show the stars or not show the stars and do a lot more with this kind of sky. So, A, do you think I should switch over to this type of sky? Not grandma's ass. Quit looking at grandma's ass. Um, put fun away. Go back over to this guy, even though I'm using the Cinti Studios assets, or use that Cinti sky that has no features other than static clouds that don't move. If you look... The clouds are actually moving in this. Sorry, I bumped the mouse there twice. But if you look at the far right-hand edge, you can see that the clouds are actually moving. So if I use this sky um, sphere, then I can have a normal sky with moving clouds and the sun moving and 
stars that show up at nighttime and that kind of stuff. Um, but just like with the phone, the way that I'm doing the phone is using the, the now node, and I'm actually getting the exact correct time. I've seen this done before in another game, and I kind of liked it, but I kind of didn't like it. And that was that if it is right now, real time for me, it is 10.33 p.m., and it's April 9th, 2020. So my phone show on, on the, the game shows the correct time and date. Now, um, I could set it to where right now when it turns 8 p.m., it's nighttime here, for example, in real life. So I could have the game check the, the time of day and see if it's daytime or nighttime here and for me locally. And that's going to affect me. But if you log in and play on my server, um, you're going to be playing on my time. So you're going to be affected by where, it, where I am in the world. Right now in Thailand, it is, what, 10 o'clock in the morning? 9 o'clock in the morning, something like that. It, it's like a 10 or 11 hour difference, or 12 or 11 or 12 hour difference. So it's roughly 10 o'clock in the morning, 10.30 in the morning for them, but it's 10.30 at night for me. So if somebody in Thailand joins me on while I'm playing, they're going to see what time of day it is for me in my time of the world. Or I could set it up to where right now it's nighttime for me, but for them it's daytime. So if he logs into my server, even though it's nighttime for me, it would be daytime for him. But I want the server to say, okay, it is now nighttime. Street lights come on. So... I could do it by a real world clock. I could establish a clock itself. Um, could probably go into the level blueprint and on event begin play, boom, create a clock. Not off event tick. I don't want to run anything off event tick if possible. Um, even if you split it up by delta second or whatever, whatever. I just don't want to run anything off an event tick. So off event begin play, I could, you know. create a, pr uh, a timer or um, time, the like time span, time span ratio. See, under the, the time span, I mean, I can break real time. See, there's your now. The now node is what's going to give you what your current local time is and, and that kind of stuff. Here is morning. Return to whether A's time is in the morning. Um, it's a leap year. It's afternoon. I mean, there's so many things that I could do with the real time stuff. Um, but I don't know if I want to run real time. I want to run game time and then set up a day night cycle based off of that. I don't. I'm really not much in the way of lighting. I, I'm trying to do everything, and when you're trying to create everything for your entire game, you're trying to create a world, you do have to worry about day-night cycle, or is it daytime all the time? Is it nighttime all the time? You know, if it's daytime all the time, it's going to be easier on your player, um, on their potatoes, or their computers. If it's nighttime, then you got to have lighting, dynamic lighting, and this, and reflections. And, yeah, there's so many different things to consider on that. Um, I, I am serious about doing for my project get date um, and set up like on the 4th of July here in the US is Independence Day we celebrate with fireworks so what I'm gonna do is on the 4th of July for that entire day I'm going to specifically set it to where it's permanently nighttime for the entire 24 hours of July 4th of this year or any year it doesn't matter every year on July 4th it's going to be permanently nighttime and every 
15 minutes or every half hour or every hour on the hour, there's going to be a fireworks show over the town. So I can create an actual global event <coughs> based off of the actual real world day, date, and time. So. Today. I mean, you can get UTC, but I don't care about UTC time. I care about my time. Time span. Number of days. Milliseconds, minutes, seconds. I could actually do it off of from minutes get real world and then do a a time based off of real world seconds or minutes or whatever probably minutes and say okay now it is going to become nighttime skylight sky sphere you do your rotation now from midday to whatever or you know you just create that Spend some time, actually. It'll probably take me a couple hours of of specifically breaking things down into little bite-sized pieces so that I can actually create that. Make frame time, time code, text as date, time. See, timers are, and if you think about, to me, timers are like a stopwatch. And essentially, if you, I always mistake that as a timeline. And when you add a timeline, it's something totally different. And it is, and it isn't, usable for what I want to do. And I probably could use a timeline just normally I think of a timeline as being good for like a door you walk over to a door and you press E the door will swing open or it will slide to the left or the right or up or down or whatever you're going to control the movement of something over a period of seconds which is also reversible but I don't need to reverse day and night cycle um, I probably will end up having to go with a timeline setting up a timeline with the span of say one hour of real time to set that up as a day night cycle so at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time you know as an example or right now it's 1040 so 1040 and one hour from now it will be midnight and then an hour after that, it will be noon. So it'll go from 12 to 12, um, 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the course of one hour of real time. So create a timer. I don't have to do it off of real time, but create a timeline that has a one hour time span in the timeline. And during that time, we're setting the actual rotation rate of the sky sphere and the skylight. That will probably work best, but I can't break that to where I get a notification, like an animation notify, um, and get notified that, hey, it is now 8 p.m. I should be nighttime now. Okay, now it is 7 a.m. It should be daytime now. So... I'm going to have to get some thought on that shit. That's going to bug me. It's inconsequential, but I still want to have it. Because I want streetlights to come on and off based off of the, the time of day. I mean, I could create a trigger on the admin, say, nighttime, and, you know, the, the sky sphere would automatically go to nighttime, the sun would go away, the street lights would go on. I could create a nighttime event. Uh, just, I don't know how I want to do it yet. It's hell, isn't it? 
first world problems. Everybody's on freaking lockdown all over the world. And yet, I'm sitting here. I very seldom leave the house anyway. But shit, I mean, now that I, they tell me that I can't, I want it. I'll find a reason to get the hell out of town or out of the house. Got nothing else better to do with my time than to actually work on this project and look at Grandma's butt. Come on, Grandma, shake that ass. There you go. Um, I could have had this game done two years ago, by the way. If I actually sat down and logged in, we'll say, 40 hours a week of, of actual time of investing time in this, this game, I could have it done in a week. Maybe two. And at some point, I will change the sit idle animation on this one to move the hands back. I haven't because I have to tailor the individual animation based off of the, the character itself. So you can actually still walk while you've got your phone. And if you hold down your, your right mouse button, you can actually turn and pan around and stuff like that. I mean, without having to worry about closing your phone. I did Town Hall from City. So we got the City Patrol car and the Heist Patrol car. So I'll work on the swimming pool. So you can actually go swimming. May actually add a, um, a pond. Make the pond where you go swimming instead. Um, the master shop is still working just fine. I need to go ahead and create the, um, I'm going to change the jump. I don't think people should be jumping that high. I can't jump that high, so. Well, I could disable it like the, uh, the division does. Well, that's just a little too high for jumping. And it's so hard to fix that. Uh, jump. Jump Z velocity. We'll just cut that in half. There's some other tweaks that you probably need to do to make it a little bit nicer, but... Oh, now you can't jump over the fence. Well, hell, this is Grandma. She can't jump over damn fence anyway. So, um, here's one more thing I want to throw out there, and then I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to eat something, and then I'm probably going to play Division 2. Um, if you guys have a promo video, preferably 1080p, a short video clip, we'll say 10 seconds. Um... Make a little commercial, a 10 second commercial for your game or your project you're working on, and let me know. Send me that, you know, compress it down, but still make it 1080p. Try to get the file size as small as possible, and then let me know. Send it to me through your Google Drive or whatever, and I will actually put your 10 second commercial for your your game project on the TV screen playing in my game and I'll show how to do that in a video and you guys can have free advertising for your game while I'm doing my stuff so as I'm coming in here or any player comes in sits down in front of this television they will see your ad playing for your game so y'all make me a 10 second commercial and you can upload it to YouTube and then show it to me there and then get me the actual um, uh, the file the file that you should be using I think is going to be um, if, how you can use Windows Movie Maker and the videos themselves the WM4 format hell I can't remember WMV 
perhaps. MP4. Yeah, I know MP4s will work. Um, but, for example, the lead-in video. I could actually put that video, and I'll do this in another, another stream. I'll actually put in a video there. Give you a quick example. I'm going to go ahead and close it on this. And open project. Um, motion. Cancel. You know what? It's on a different version of UE4. Um, it's on 420. You know what? I'll just open the actual version of it. Not it. Just show you an example of it really quickly, and then I'm out of here. There we go. So, what I'll do is, uh, in in a video, I will show how I will be doing on the Cinti Studios television, but it will work on anything, uh, and actually display that. I would use the YouTube videos, but. I still haven't figured out how to get the sound attenuation to work correctly. Yeah, the menu looks like shit. Whatever. So I haven't figured out why the material instance does that weird blue shit in the beginning. But if you notice, like right here on the uh, that billboard, it's just a little lead-in uh, video. But I can show how to do that put that video on the screen but for you guys I'll show you some love you guys show me some love and give me a 10 second video and I will put it in and put it in my game you guys can, I'll, I'll, I'll work up one eventually for mine it goes along with the advertising um, system that I, I came up with I just don't have a hosted server I can actually post them on right now. I don't have an IP address on, on my shit because AT&T sucks donkey nuts. I can't get a physical IP address through my router. I probably could, but I'm not gonna. Um, so yeah, just adding that video in like that. Um, I'll show you how to do that. I love my hoverboard. Um, and everybody needs robot strippers. No, I never do anything with safety. So you can see even you got little ones up there. Besides being able to get some fresh adult zub, it's only 823Z. got multiple different styles of billboards and so forth and I can put that in here and the whole point was to run my advertising system run my ads boy get out my damn way so yeah little things like these you know the spring pads anything you can do to add fun to your projects fun to your games do it you know there's too many serious games out there. Have some damn fun. Most games try to, like, division. They don't let you jump, so you can't go in areas where you're not supposed to go. Uh, sure, you're, you're going to need to have areas where you don't want your players to go, but um, it's like, well, what if I go back here? And, well, no. Every so often, you just have to put blocking volumes in to prevent your player from going to certain areas. But, what if I go back here? Can I go back there? No. Can I go in here in the bar? No, no I can't get through there. I can't crouch to get through. Um, 
come over here, I look in the window. There's a guy getting a blowjob. Um, and people pointing and laughing and, and staring. So yeah. Add Easter eggs. Add fun things. Add things that people don't expect. You know? See, I just got about got stuck there. So, make them, you know, make areas where it looks like you're not supposed to be there, and hide things. You know, even games as far back as the original Doom, not this whatever bullshit that just came out, um, but the original Doom, original um, early games, had things like... Um, if you went over here, went over there, did this, did that, and managed to get to a certain location, if you looked in just the right spot, you'd see the developer wrote his name. Fred was here, you know? Little goofy things like that. You can put Chris was here, or Beefalo sucks donkey nuts, or whatever, you know? Just put things in, in off-the-wall locations, that people need to actually go out and find, like, you know, the scene going on inside the, uh, the garage there. Or, you know, you look back here, there might be a corpse on the ground, or, you know, get creative. Don't make cookie-cutter games. Come up with your own ideas. Be awesome. Be amazing. Love each other. Love yourself. And make me a 10 second commercial. Alright, I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm hungry. Main menu. And exit. Well, I'll see you guys later.